don't necessarily know a lot of more obscure characters. Oh, hello, cat. A lot of the more obscure characters in the Chetosphere, in the in the outer rim territories of the online alt right. This guy, for example, has flown mostly under my radar until now. Jean Francois Gariepi, or Gariepi, or Gariepi. I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, who goes mostly by JF Gariepi, and I want to I want to preface this because I think. A couple things give us a decent overview of what to expect before we jump into the meat of what's what's going on currently. Now, another thing people have talked about, so he was not asked to return to his postdoctoral position. Uh, Gary P. was in a relationship with one of his undergraduate lab assistants. Gary P. told the Daily Beast he left Duke University for Canada because, quote, he'd grown disillusioned with the scientific community. In a Facebook post, Gary P. said he was leaving academia because it was quote, defective and was interfering with, quote, a true search for knowledge. He said he would continue to search for a better way to satisfy his scientific curiosity. The personal life part, I kind of skipped over because I wanted to go into his, his educational background. He's been married three times and his third wife, which is really, I think, where a lot of the downhill trajectory started. His third wife separated in July 2015. In December 2015, his wife gave birth to his first son. In the ensuing custody case, his wife accused Garipi of emotional abuse and of threatening to abduct their child to his native Canada. The wife was given custody, to which he appealed. The appellate court judge ordered Garipi to undergo a psychological evaluation, which resulted in him being evaluated as, quote, very bright intellectually, while also showing a, quote, lack of insight and impulse control, end quote. It's, it's not uncommon for people in this space in, in right-wing spheres, and especially, as we're going to see later, he literally, like, believes women are inferior. He has reprehensible beliefs about women, uh, so it's not surprising that he would be an abusive piece of shit. However, here's, here's the really interesting part that is going to later tie into what we're talking about today. During the custody case, excuse me, let me, take two. During the custody case, Garipi started a relationship with a 19-year-old mestizo autistic woman from Texas and eventually convinced her to drive to North Carolina to be with him and attempted to get her pregnant. Here's, here's the wild shit about him. As the parents objectified to their daughter's relationship with Garipi, a case was filed in which the woman was revealed to have, quote, the social and mental maturity of a 10 or 11 year old child, according to a psychologist. Garipi claimed she was pregnant with his child, but this was proven false. Guardianship was consequently transferred to the parents who severed the relationship. In an interview, Garipi told the Daily Beast that the current family court system is designed to, quote, harass men, to harass white heterosexual males. Right now I'm being treated as a criminal by courts that don't have the power to put me in jail, but they have the power to ruin my life. So we have somebody who was going through divorce proceedings with somebody who said that he was abusive. And the first target, and I, I use the word target because as it will likely become clear, I think... He, he very much preys on people, uh, or at least preys on women for relationships. The first target after that was an autistic woman who a psychologist said had the mental acuity of a 10 or 11 year old. When he went from being a neuroscientist in 2014, Garipi received $25,000 from Jeffrey Epstein to start the nonprofit organization Neuro.TV, which was dedicated to education on science and philosophy via YouTube. So a couple things to note here. One, Jeffrey Epstein has long been known to be a weirdo who was obsessed with like living beyond your years and like uh, like weird neuroscientific rich person woo-woo bullshit. Like that, yeah, no, it's, it's that Epstein. It is that Epstein. No, Renaru, it's that Epstein. <laughs> Uh, this was in 2014. Of course, he had already been a criminal at that point, even if it wasn't as widely broadcasted. Now, this part is particularly interesting to me. Asked whether he felt any regrets for having taken money from a sex offender, Garipi said, quote, I'd cash a check straight, sent straight from the devil if it could allow me to advance science or science education. I did know about the earlier conviction of Epstein when I accepted the money. 
I didn't know most of the recent allegations though, which are worse than I thought. In any case, I do not regret taking the money. Evil people are not just evil. The, the idea that you can look at Jeffrey Epstein at any point in his life for anything he's done and be like, oh, evil people aren't just evil, makes my skin crawl. Like, this motherfucker is. But here's here's the real slam dunk from the Wikipedia article. Is he talks about like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd still take the money, uh, even though I didn't know about everything he'd done before. And Wikipedia says later that year, Grippy requested additional funding from Epstein to finance his book, The Revolutionary Phenotype. Epstein did not respond. The book, which was self-published in 2018, argues that artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, and other advances might lead to the destruction of humanity. Uh, this YouTube channel, oh yes, is uh, Nicholas DeOrio. And this is an excellent video. If you want just like a very broad, this video was made three years ago, so it's not entirely up to date, but if you want a very broad overview with who this cringe magnet is, Go check out Nicholas Oreo's channel. Go check out this video because it, it is a very... Uh, I think their content is a little bit more locale oriented than I usually get into. Um, but as we're going to see here, remember when he started dating a student previously and then also seduced somebody who psychologists said had the mental acuity of a 10 or 11 year old. Keep that in mind for what we're going to see next because he ends up dating somebody else, as we're going to see. And the the reason that I uh, use this YouTuber's clip is that this is the kind of cat who goes on YouTube all the time. And so there's a lot of, like, spread out stuff over the course of, like, years. And they, they collect it, a lot of the, the, the best bits, very nicely in this video, as we're going to see. I have your ethnic heritage from... I can't answer that... I gave him before, uh, I had um, a bad life, but then after I discovered GF, then I started to look at GF every day, I was always looking at GF, I became crazy, I lost everything I had, I lost my job, my family, I quit school, I lost everything, I was just looking at GF all the time, I was crazy, and then after I wrote to him, I said, GF, I want to suck your dick. <laughs> No. So, Mockingbird, that is not the 19-year-old. That is an entirely different woman that he is dating as of three years ago. And while in other videos they've talked about her, I think she may be from Europe or somewhere around there. What they're talking about here, and the YouTuber will go over it, um, yeah, Brody Smiles, is that she was apparently, the, the way they started dating was she was so obsessed, by, by her account here, she was so obsessed with him that she couldn't stop watching his videos, that she lost her job, she isolated her family, she was just watching his videos all the time. Yeah, the power imbalance is unreal. Like, like this is somebody who is literally, JF Gary P seems to only go after relationships where he literally holds all the power. New girlfriend, and as you can probably tell, we're already running into some more issues here. She just stated for the record that she went crazy. She lost everything she had. She lost her job. She lost her family. She quit school, and she just really wanted to suck his dick. You lost your job because you were addicted. I lost everything. You lost everything, everything because you were addicted to my shows. <laughs> I was just looking at your show all the time. Even I had a, a job, and I, w I was going to hide in the the bathroom to listen to your show and I was, <laughs> then my boss said why you always disappear for 10 minutes <laughs> then he fired me I lost everything my family my friends everything because I was just looking at GF show all the time uh, you've never told me that wonderful first time to hear it okay um maybe this was just another isolated event maybe there's a sufficient explanation for this one well in this clip you're seeing on screen now jf's girlfriend is yelling at another content creator called no white guilt about apparently who jf describes as someone who looks like him who tried to hurt her oh mace i think she might be i i cannot tell if she uh Renaru has a really good point she could very well be hard of hearing and i I don't want to judge anybody based on any accents or the way they talk or anything like that. But there are certain things that she has done that make me think she may be neurodivergent. I don't want to really speculate on that. However, I do think that her 
admitting or her saying that she's been so obsessed with him over his videos and she wanted to suck his dick and it was at the expense of all of everything else in her life like that alone i would say without anything else that alone i would say would constitute like i i would say somebody like that could very easily benefit from some therapy don't, don't say anything violent no, I what do you have to say? so and this is another important thing because she is going to talk about how this no white girl guy apparently the way that uh f jfg describes it is she is mistaking the snow white girl guy for somebody who had stalked her or harassed her but really just watch how this all plays out because it is it's it's surreal it's almost lynchian in a way so. no i get seriously you tried to kill me okay? okay and i'm fucking sick that you're fucking me with me you always follow me everywhere and <laughs> all right. and you say you want to make spiritual movement but you fucking tried to kill me for three years okay and there are some more random outbursts like this one hello mama jeff what's up hey jeff i saw in the chat the little mermaid is now black the little mermaid is now black yeah. Oh yeah, so it's uh, hashtag not my Ariel. And this one. Because I was tired of Gia and I locked him up in the basement. So now I took control of the public space. <laughs> I control the public space, okay? So now we're gonna do something a little bit different, okay? Get on your knees and pray. Do it right now. Now we're gonna do only praying. <laughs> okay, I control the public space. Jeff is in the basement. <laughs> yes. Hey Jeff, you go to the basement. That really call into question if this situation is, well, okay. And I would say it definitely appears JF has a type and somehow it actually doesn't end here. In a much- So here, and here's one of the weirder things that shows how deeply ingrained into his ideology she became uh pair of salamanca just wait because we're we're not even we're not nearing the bottom yet we got we got a way to go uh this is oh yeah no i wasn't i wasn't joking y'all this is uh, the the reason i went on a deep dive today spelunking for this there's a reason i brought it all to y'all Montreal local news station, they had actually reported on some crazy graffiti that appeared on the walls. Some of them included 1488 with a little heart next to it, a Hail Warsky sign, a Save Richard Spencer, and JF Garipe, King of the World. Now wait a second, I know what you're thinking. There is no way. There's no way I'm transitioning this. There's no way it is who you think it is. Is it? Well, the security footage really does do a great job of making it look like that. And just when you think this story can't possibly go off the rails any more than it already has, here's a clip that I'd like to show you. It's a great clip, probably one of the most perfect clips I've ever seen. On the left side, you see Richard, I win, they fucking lose! Spencer, and on the right, JF, who's about to make an outrageous statement. Pay very close attention. Uh, did you watch my yesterday show? Richard? I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, because I announced that uh, I, 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 just for uh, transparency, because I was talking about the news item about Jeff Epstein, and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with it. So he has been at least forthright about that, and this that's about it for what I wanted to show there. Um, Brody Smiles, it, uh, save your laughter for a little bit. Uh, yeah, if ever there were signs of concern, this is it. So this is, like, the rest of this video. And again, if you want more of the, the background lore on this guy and his early relationship history leading up to that, and then just a little bit more on on the Richard Spencer stuff, go check out Nicholas Oreo. Um, they did a really good job of bringing those, those like, just the clips I wanted. PEI RCMP put out call for info on woman missing since June 17th. Alora Patuan, 30, has ties to both Western PEI and the province of Quebec. Now, there, there are a couple important things to note because JF has come out and talked about it. 
He's 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 mentioned this. He's talked about it. He's gone on Friends podcast to talk about this. And it's important to note that and you may notice June was a little it was a little while ago. That was that was like 3 months ago. The last known sighting was on June 17th, the village that's home to the PEI end of the Confederate bridge linking the province to New Brunswick. Uh, she's 30 years old, 5 feet 10 inches, weighs 140 pounds, and has brown curly hair. She speaks both French and English. She was last seen in mid-June after receiving a call from someone they describe as a concerned citizen, uh, which is what led the RCMP to put out a call for information as she was missing. Quote, this is a high-priority file, said Corporal Gavin Moore of the RCMP. Quote, we make efforts to follow up on all known contacts to that individual. We reach out and make sure that anybody who may have come across them will let us know. He expects police will be conducting interviews and checking through any available surveillance video as they search for her. Her last known address was in Western PEI. When someone goes missing, it has deep and far-reaching impacts for the person and those that know them, said a post on the Facebook page maintained by the RCMP. We ask that people spread the word through social media respectfully. So here's what he wrote on the 4th, one day after the police story broke. Oh, thank you so much, NB, ND. I appreciate it. Thank you for following. Thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome. Howdy, howdy. So, on the 4th, again, a day after the, the news article about her disappearance came out, JF says, The police in Canada is looking for Mama JF because in true Mama JF fashion, she has left our home in June and has disappeared from the map. Just, you know, you know how people just do. They just leave and disappear. Come on. I, whomst among us? Who, who among us has not done this at some point or the other? Uh, back to his Twitter, I am sure that Mama JF is fine. I know she's been safe for at least two days after I dropped her where she wanted in June. Mama JF left our home entirely voluntarily to go live a life of adventure wherever it would bring her. But since she has electronically disappeared, not connecting to her cell phone or updating me or her family, I ask anyone who would have encountered her to just notify the police so that they can know she is safe. And I ask her if she wants to leave a note to the police, me, or her family to ensure everyone of her safety. If you want to send an encrypted tip anonymously, I can receive them at his proton mail. How 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 best to put where we're at in this story? We're 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 heading towards the tail end, I feel, of the case of Jean-Francois Garipi, a former neuroscientist turned political alt-right ethnostate commentator, alongside people like Andrew Anglin, who runs the Daily Stormer, alongside people like Richard Spencer. Apparently, he's buddy buddy with Richard Spencer who's has a predilection a past of preying on people who are mentally unstable um whose most recent girlfriend apparently before they started dating exhibited signs of obsession with him the entire reason they started a relationship was apparently she was so by her attesting so obsessed with him that she was losing her job that she was losing her friends and family because she couldn't stop watching his videos online And so about three months, apparently, after she disappeared, she became a missing person and the police started looking for her. Requia Scott, thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who's joining, by the way. And he is trying to cover his tracks or, or, or remove any suspicion from himself by saying that he knows she's been safe for at least two days after he dropped her. And that she was going to live a life of adventure wherever it would bring her. He doesn't really say what that is. So let's... In his own words, his, his girlfriend has been gone for three months. He doesn't... And I cannot, I cannot express enough how important it is to note. He doesn't mention her missing at all. Until the police get involved. Until there's a news article on it. Let's get into what he says. Also, I find it deeply funny. His his intro is really cringe. I find it really funny how chuds try and like... Like they emulate... Like... Late night TV. Like, like they're trying to be like Jimmy Fallon or something. And it's so funny. Watch his intro and then it opens into him just in like a basement.
Hello everyone and welcome to Jeff G like it's, it's almost like a punchline. Like it's almost just like like it's just hit like I don't know, that's great. Because it, it's just like this corner of the room. And I'm like, I'm in I'm in a corner of the room too, but like he's really just like sardined in there. Um it's very funny to me. Yeah, again with the bricks, we got got nice brick wall over here, got a nice wood, different kind of wood, different kind of wood. This guy needs to get his his wood feng shui shit coordinated because it's it's not it's not flowing for me. Well, let, let's see what he has to say to defend himself. Um, so yeah, it's the disappearance of Mama JF. Mama JF has been disappearing in the sense of not leaving, uh, not leaving any contact, not leaving information about where she was. Uh, and I titled my episode, The Cost of Liberty, because I didn't want any of this. I'm just a family guy, and I've always been wanting to provide and secure for people around me. Uh, but there is one thing I cannot do in our... Yeah, like, the, the way that he talks about her, like, oh, you know, she just disappears from time to time, is so weird. And, again, I, based on nothing but the fact that she has and she was caught on security camera spray painting and tagging uh graffiti calling him the king of the world um she by her own admission like moved to be with him to suck his dick because she was so obsessed with his videos based on nothing but those two things i question her her the faculties and her ability to take care of herself in the wild and we'll we'll see where exactly he dropped her off, and how how he claims that he has continued having um, contact with her. Which, if he did, the police wouldn't be continuing to look for her necessarily. So that's another interesting thing I feel. I cannot stop you from exposing yourself to risks when. You say the words, I want to do it. When you claim your own liberty, you are on your own, and I cannot do anything to protect you. And so <clears throat> that, uh, I don't know if Mama JF is in danger. I don't know where she is. Uh, but at this point, I'm forced to talk about it because people are spreading rumors on the internet because, and you know, people are, are accusing me of murder on, on the internet. It's like, you guys don't know. You guys don't know the police. I've been speaking with the feds on an everyday basis uh, for a couple of days now, for maybe... Uh, Thank you, De Sniper know, Elite. A couple of days. For a couple of days, I've been speaking uh, to the police <clears throat> on a regular basis. So it all stems from Mama JF, you guys know, and I've stated it publicly in June. She left. She didn't want... Uh, she... I mean, it's not even clear why she left, and she's done it in the past. You guys have seen it, who have been following the show for years. Uh, she she wanted to go away, so that's that's all uh, we often know with Mama JF. She wants to go away. She had done it once, and had come back uh, to us um, weeks after. Uh, and you'll remember, she she came on the show on the day she came back. And she said something along the lines of, uh, well, I thought you want, you didn't want to be with me anymore. Uh, and so, <clears throat> and, and I said to her, no, no, you left of your own will. Uh, but, but she says yes, and then she says yes, but I thought, I thought you wanted me to leave. That is sometimes the, the state of delusion in female minds and... I can't do anything about this. I have zero control over this. If we were in the society, the Christian society of 1920, maybe I could file some report and say, hey, my wife is a little crazy. She's a little out there. Can I control, can, can I own her, basically? <laughs> and I'm sure that, that there were, uh, I mean, basically you didn't have to file that paper in 1920s. Because in, in the 1920s, this was called marriage. <laughs> but we are not in the 1920s, and we are in 2023, where uh, we have an experiment going on in society. What happens when you let these females do whatever the fuck they want? Well, 
<coughs> what happens is that they sometimes make bad decisions. That is one big pile of shit. Okay, so that's a, a lot there. Like, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot there. Um, Burning Hydra, it's unclear if they're actually married. Like, he, he says wife. I think he's just saying that at this point for... Um, to give an example of, of, like, in the 1920s when men could just, like, exert control. And Scented Llama, again, I, I, I brought up all the early stuff, because you can just jump into this, but again, without the context of him having relationships with previous students, him pursuing relationships with people who psychologists say were at the level of a 10 or 11-year-old mentally, trying to get them pregnant, having multiple failed marriages and one of them publicly ending with her saying that he abused and manipulated her psychologically a lot like all of that comes into such focus and when you when you have him literally justifying like oh if we lived in a better society like then yeah that like we could just control women or we could just control feet like yeah no mockingbird you're absolutely right he just calls them females <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, negligent is a really good word for it, Renaru. Like, it, it is... Not that he was her caretaker or anything. Like, it seemed like she had her own faculties and her own, like, willpower, obviously. But there is a level of common sense that should be applied to people who, like, kind of lack that judgment. In, in the same way, as, like, a teenager... Like, a lot of parents, if, if a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old gets their license and they say, hey, me and my friends want to go on a cross-country trip, we don't know, we're just going to follow the road, see where it goes. It's the responsibility of a parent to be like, w uh, no, you're, you are not prepared for that. You are not mature enough for that. You are not responsible enough for that. You don't have the support that you need for that. Sing Out Studios, thank you very much for following. So it's, it's like when, when I first heard this and I had, I had to go looking for this, it blew my mind that he would be so flippant about something that now kind of looks a little bit more serious because she's been missing. Nobody's heard from her. Nobody knows where she is. And maybe she'll turn up like she very well might because I want to show you like what he, how he says that he actually dropped her off is, is fascinating. So the last uh, message that she sends me uh, in June, two days after leaving, and it had been apparent, I think I, I may have been in contact for a couple of times during these two days, so I was sure that she was progressing through whatever trip she wanted to do. I knew that she was still alive. Uh, but two days uh, after leaving, she says, I have changed my plans. I will not hold my promise uh, toward you. I will not be reachable and I and it's like okay uh, I uh, she says I have a new plan and I'm like does your new plan involve any sort of attack against me or the family so again we see here like she is apparently she wants to go off the grid wants to do a survivalist thing but if if what he's saying is true. This is somebody who is changing a life plan with no support. Like, this isn't... Like, she has. if she bought camping gear and she's just going off to live in the woods and then she's like, oh, actually, I won't be reachable. If you care about somebody, even if you want to give them the space, and I, I don't think he cares about uh, this person. I think he's a very controlling, manipulative, and immature person just from a cursory glance at his history. But if you care about somebody, even if you want to have them, you know, express their independence through, through like going off and being a survivalist, whatever, that's fine. You do you. However, the point at which somebody says, oh yeah, I'm just going off the grid and nobody's going to reach me is the point at which you as a responsible adult have a responsibility to be like, hey, if, if nothing else, do you, do you want to reconsider that? Do you need help? Can we talk this over? Do you have a backup plan? And his reaction instead is, okay, apparently. By his attesting, his reaction is just like, yeah, what am I going to do? I mean, if it was the 1920s, I could control women, but I can't. 
So, like, again, if you cared about somebody, if you were really concerned, this is not this is not a level of concern you show for a partner. Like, this is a worrying lack of concern. And that's what I was explaining to the police, you know, Mama JF. You, you remember the story she told on her video on YouTube where she talked about <laughs> no no scented llama i i dead domain i did not expect to catch on as a name it, it was just it was what i named my blog like five years ago um and yeah ren Roo, he's just he just keeps like i don't want to say he's digging a hole but he just keeps giving which is a big thing again if, if we got any true crime heads out there unnecessary detail is a huge huge part now i'm not saying that he killed her or anything i'm saying unnecessary detail huge huge part of fake alibis like massive part of it crossing the border in, in spain and in the enclaves of spain and north africa mama jeff is a fucking extreme like zero zero seven level of like fugitive mentality uh, and I, I was kind of telling that to the police uh, jokingly half jokingly but it's like she she's a professional fugitive who doesn't commit crimes <laughs> so it's like she's gonna be hiding from you as as hard as the red she gazebo can, while also not having anything to reproach to herself but that's just how she is so i mean she, she and so from there i'm like i'm gonna drop myself behind i'm going to disappear uh, you're not going to be able to reach me because in my view there was no evidence of criminality. There was no evidence of distress. It looked like, to me, someone who has decided to go survivalism. He, he turns this into an argument, like a pro-prepper argument. It's fascinating. Mockingbird, the only question is what is his motive? I mean, it could have been anything. Like again, take, in, take the context and the history of this person into account where we know he has abusive tendencies. We know he is psychologically and emotionally manipulative. Like, and that he, I, I would easily say, took advantage of somebody who was obsessed with him. Like, they, it could be anything. He could have just gotten fed up. And here's, here's really what I think is, I don't think he killed her. I don't think he whacked her over her head with a shovel. I don't think he, you know, buried the bottom under the floorboards. But I think what he did was just as good as killing her, or just as bad as killing her, I guess. Because what I think is that he did drop her off somewhere because maybe she did want it or maybe he even put that idea in her head but he knows that if she is out there defenseless she's as good as dead or maybe it was just to get her out of out of the house out of his life maybe he was tired of her nagging or something you can see in some of those earlier clips i showed he looks annoyed as shit at like her just coming and and telling him little jokes and stuff he looks like mad and over it and partially that's just like his face but i think he is culpable like like somewhere along the, the way and it could be he could you know he might have hacked her up with the chainsaw whatever that would be awful and terrible i don't think that's what happened i think that's the the thing everybody wants to jump through that's the sensational aspect uh and dagger as you're you're saying the lack of any sort of mission of fault is pretty telling it absolutely is like it's like what how how do you not look back on this when somebody is missing when they haven't shown back up when their family is worried and go yeah my bad like it's just like oh no it was it was all her especially when you espouse stuff like oh women look how dumb women are because men can't make choices for them like what dude <clears throat> there's lots of people making jokes right now on the social media like jeff where did you hide the body and all I knew that this was coming to this no matter what because we live in a society that just can't accept the cost of liberty the cost of li there he is he said the thing we get a gets like some confetti for the the title drop got a, a late title card here put it on the giant bomb database um what a weird thing to like the cost of lip the cost of liberty sounds like one of those shitty like faith-based films that you'll accidentally see a trailer of at amc right like wait let's let's fan cast what is the cost of liberty the cost of liberty is about a 
you just basically play like uh, conservative grievance bingo with with uh, faith movies. It's about a uh, a Vietnam vet whose son gets expelled from school for not using pronouns. Starring, yeah, <laughs> Dagger Jado, starring Jim Caviezel and Kevin Sorbo. Kevin Sorbo's the vet. Jim Caviezel's the son who gets expelled from school. See, we got it. We got it right there. I will take a million dollars from the people uh, who make the God's Not Dead movies. The Cost of Liberty sounds like the name of a terrible right-wing history book. Sounds like a weird country album. Yeah, it sounds like... Um, it sounds like a 2001 era. Somebody slapping stickers. Pronouns. Gender ambiguity. I'm, I feel so bad because he has a British accent, but the British accent I always default to is not at all the same. Thank you, Lil Nido, for the pronoun sticker, by the way. Huh. And Kirk Cameron is the cool teacher who believes in God. Yeah. Liberty is you're gonna have a bunch of females make terrible decisions. But no, I have not killed Mama JF, and I would be very surprised that I'm even considered a suspect uh, in any way. Uh, in what world? Le wh First off, well known, and even if it's slightly apocryphal, it is well known that in a huge amount of cases of people's disappearances, the partner did it. That's why police always look at the partner first. And when it's a man, especially. The idea that he's like, why would I be a suspect? Because you're not only the partner, you're the last person to have seen her alive. You are the one who took her to the secondary location. You took her to the place. Cops always tell you not to go. It's like that John Mulaney bit about the secondary location. You don't go to the secondary location. You took her there, buddy. That's a good idea. Let's check the comments real quick. God. Whew. The JFG Tonight Store. Now, mind you, you can tell how concerned he is, obviously, by how much uh, you can buy of his shit on here. What the fuck? No, if, if you're wondering what kind of sympathy you get from, from the commenters here, uh, women face no consequence for their actions. What? Get help. Stop it. Get some help. I, I just used... I just used the, the Michael Jordan stop it. Get help clip in a, in a stream highlights. I'm going to have to use it again. Uh, nature teaches consequences for our actions. Women's freedom go... Fucking what? Nature teaches consequences for our actions. Women's freedom goes against nature. These are his fans. These are the people who are like on his side about this. Okay, I saw Jewish propaganda. So we're gonna, let's dig into this one because this, this looks like some good eating. I consider it another aspect of the Jewish sociological propaganda ruining Western order, like women voluntarily and voluntarily entering an environment their nature tells them will be dangerous e.g with a pavement ape jesus whoa fuck man i forgot we're, we're on odyssey we're in the wild west we're in uncharted waters here there are often more afraid of the yiddish denunciation complex than the physical danger i recently saw a clip on this with a psychologist indicating that no creature in nature voluntarily takes on danger for no benefit even predators but our women are taught that they are bad unless they do these insane and dangerous things what the f he D this dude space lasers let this dude found a way. This should be in the mental gymnastics Olympics. This he found a way to blame Jews for this lady disappearing into the woods. Incredible. The mind. The mind boggles. Let Here. As, and, and we were talking earlier about how uh, 
how a lot of these streamers and stuff, they should just use early, like, Minecraft YouTuber intros. The Crucible, it, it's it's giving 2013 edgy Minecraft vibes. Like, it's it's giving... Um, does anybody know the... the He does a lot of fighting games, but the, the Mortal Kombat um, channel... Or I know him from Mortal Kombat, but Dynasty? Like, Dynasty is still rocking... Last time I checked, still rocking that, like, old-school style uh, pre-rendered YouTube intro. It's given those vibes. A testing ground for ideas politically incorrect. The war ground of ideas. Adults only. This is not a safe space. Fucking embarrassing. Cringe as hell. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Crucible. I'm your host, Andrew Wilson. Tonight, we have uh, someone who's no stranger to The Crucible. He's been on for multiple debates. God, these guys... And, like, the, the Quebecois accent is, is hard to listen to just because, like, it's hard to understand what he's enunciating. But... These guys just have, the like, the raw charisma... Of a tub of melted vanilla ice cream. Like, it is just... They are so hard to watch. Even though they hate church preachers get a little bit, eh. But, uh... This is... Anyway. We'll, we'll speed this up just a skosh to get through this. Because I do want to get to the Steven Anderson stuff tonight. Now, apparently, he's landed in it a bit. Uh, JF Gary Eppie. Uh, welcome all. We're going to bring him out uh, for an interview in just a second. Hello, Ethan Ralph. Hello, Kino Casino. Hello, everybody who streams sniping. You're welcome to watch as well. JF Gary Eppie. Long time no see. Welcome back to the Crucible. <laughs> Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a little bit disappointed by the thumbnail, Andrew. What was in the uh, thumbnail? It's a little neutral. It's a little drab. I would have gone with something like... Okay, so, again, in, in the previous video, he was very much trying to assuage any, any fears that he was a killer and doing poorly. In this one, he takes an entirely different approach, and he is just yucking it up. Like, like listen to the way they joke about this person who is missing and wanted by police. Exclusive interview, the Hudson Bay Butcher. Yeah, well, so, you know, speaking of this, and by the way, I'll get on my thumbnail guy about this, because uh, you're right, I feel like in this exclusive, uh, I really should have gone all out, and so I probably have to fire him. But I have heard rumors to the effect of everything that uh, you have bashed Mama's JF's brains in with a shovel to you have been taking her remains out of the refrigerator and eating it for breakfast. Uh, now, uh, JF, I don't want to put any words in your mouth, <laughs> but going back backwards to forwards, can you give us a good established timeline of events? Yes, and what you just mentioned there seems to be the perception of some people on the internet, and so I find myself forced in these interviews and in my own show. I didn't want to talk about this story for many days, and people saw that I was a little more nervous on stream, that I had a little less time for preparation in the last few weeks, and, uh, well, in the last week, mostly, and it's, uh, it was largely because I was thinking about this case, but I didn't want to talk about it. But now that the police decided to go with the, the case of the disappearance of Mama JF, uh, it's now public, and, and it's better for me to talk a little bit about it, to correct the misinformation that's out there, and also to help this investigation, because I don't think it's an investigation that targets any sort of persecution against her or me. I think that there's just too much people who want to know where Mama JF is, and they, they got worried, and justifiably so to some extent. I mean, no one knows where Mama JF is currently, as we, that we know. Uh, she has gone on a trip, and she left no trace behind, and she, she intentionally, apparently, uh, got rid of... Really quick, the Prez record, I think so, and that makes me so mad, because fuck that. Like, Andrew Wilson, you chud dipshit, you don't get to claim Evil Dead. You don't get to claim Evil Dead. You don't get to claim Ash Williams. If anything that could help track her, so, uh, you know, in the modern world, it's very easy if you keep a credit card, a cell phone, anything, they, they will be able to get back to you. Uh, but Mama Jeff chose uh, to go another way, uh, went off-grid, and on her own volition. So that, that's a project that she had been working on and preparing for many years, and I have respected her liberty in doing so. Uh, so she chose to go, and, and now the police is looking for her because she has given no news to anyone, and she could be dead, she could be uh, dead, or she could be uh, having fun at some party and just didn't hear about her loved ones who are worried about her. Now, JF, you can understand how this could turn into such a human interest piece. It was an explosive bombshell that you dropped on your show. It's been picked up by multiple shows in the Thank you very much. My name is Scardy. Mama JF. What did that evil JF Gary Eppie do to her, right? I've seen this over and over and over and over again. Uh, now, to be fair, JF, it's a little <laughs> odd to kind of go on, on your show. True, done randomly. Saying, Listen, not only has she disappeared, but she just kind of conveniently decided to make sure to leave no trace of herself behind, no way to contact her, no way to discuss anything with her. That's a little weird, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can think all of the weirdness you want, uh, but 
it's the kind of girl that accepts having you know sex with me. So it's just sorry. <laughs> oh, Joe, this this fucking wannabe lumberjack, slick back hair, douche nozzle smokes in his studio too. I know it just smells crazy in there. Like it smells crazy for real. Like and, and nothing wrong necessarily with just smoking. But like that kind of casual smoking from the desk is like Dude, if if y'all have ever been in a place where the smoking like somebody's been smoking for a long time, whew, like it's it's rough. It's rough. Yeah, want to be Andrew Tate? I think is is kind of the vibe this Andrew Wilson guy's given off. <laughs> if you ever find a normie 100 IQ woman who's a uh, elementary school teacher who wants to date me, uh, okay, you'll have a more normal JF life. But as long as you send me these girls, it's going to get weird. Yes. <laughs> so let's move backwards into the dating. And again, right? Let, all right. I want to actually hear because I I haven't watched much of this video, but I want to. Uh, I want to hear what they talk about with dating because he's like, oh, as long as you send me these girls, he has a history of being predatory towards those kind of girls, like girls that he is now he like he's basically calling the this missing woman crazy as well. I'm gonna go out for a week. It would probably be around 55, 60 pounds. What sort of uh, equipment was Mama JF going in the wilderness with? Um, according to the kind of update missing persons report, uh, she was just kind of seen with a nap bag, right? Just a regular backpack. So what what, what was she carrying in the terms of survival gear, JF? Well, uh, I mean, I know that she's been collecting a lot of stuff, you know, the kind of things like a stool for uh, sitting around fires, some material to light a fire, a knife. Uh, but looking at the size of her bag as she left, uh, I wouldn't think that she was going, at the, at the point when she left, I wouldn't think that she was going for extended, extended survival in nature. Uh, Mama Jeff, when she goes on hitchhiking tri trips, she uses human society a lot. Uh, she will ask. Again, it is, it is contingent upon you to make sure that if you, if you really care about this person, that if if you are letting them go and do this thing, that they're doing it correctly, like th saying that oh she had like a knife, and she's just gonna go hitchhike. Like what? No wonder she's missing because, like this this is who was looking after her. This is who is caring about her. Is like oh yeah, you just want to go off fine, whatever. Yeah no, Santa Llama like it could it could not sound more sus. Three minutes, 22 seconds left on the hype train. For help, she will find new friends to partner with. She will uh, receive help and gifts and food. We're not talking, uh, at least as far as I know, she, she had no intent of going into the actual forest, surviving for extended period. She may pass in a forest at times to get from one world to another, but that, that is it. Yeah, Jeff is so a, you're talking is a about urban urban. creature. Oh, thank you very much, Sing Out Studios. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you for stopping by and good luck on your race tomorrow. Yeah, nothing you saying, like, it just, it doesn't make sense, and it's, I, I understand this guy's trying to push back a little bit, but I don't think he's doing a great job. Yeah, so yeah. urban survival is what you're talking yes. about. Okay. So uh, one of the kind of one of the keys here, though, is that if you're going to cross borders and you're going to do this kind of thing um, that you've expressed, kind of, it's been a meme on the internet, double O Mama JF, right? <laughs> double O agent. That's still going to require things like passports, sets of identification, uh, things like this. You would think that the authorities could fairly easily track that stuff down if she had been crossing in any borders. So it stands to reason she's likely still in Canada, right? Uh, you know, as the investigator told me exactly this, and I said, Mama JF is a special case. Uh, she has not been, uh, she has shown in the past being able to switch countries at time using networks of smuggling. Uh, when she visited the Spain enclave in North Africa where she was observing migrant movements, uh, she went there. Thank you very much, Cheese Tortellini, for the 100 biddies. I do my best to think critically. We have Hype Train level 2 now. We are 0% of the way to, I believe, level 3. Or no, we are level 1. And now we are on level two with five minutes left to go. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, no, the ultimate nobody. I couldn't even imagine treating anybody's disappearance like this, much less your partner. Like, exactly. Like, he, he is so flippant and casual. Aside from all the joking they were doing earlier, it is just, like, bizarre. And this element of, like, apparently she has networks of people that can smuggle her between countries. Scarlet Unscripted, thank you for subbing tier one. Like that, that part more than anything sounds like bullshit. Like, like if she's an experienced survivalist or whatever, that's fine. But she has, like, she has, she has a guy is what you're telling me. Like he, he's literally like, ah, she has a guy who can get you in, uh, into countries. Like what the fuck? And I believe that she had lost her passport and was able to get from country to country without passport. And so, as I said to the investigator, sure, I don't expect her to be outside of Canada, but I also wouldn't bar it as an hypothesis. Well, I mean, there's only one place that she could go from Canada, which would be right south into the United States. 
That would basically be where that she is would a go, false right? assumption. As I said on my show, she could be on a container of bananas headed toward Peru right now. Do you, th do you think that that's actually likely? I think it's totally possible. Mama Jeff is capable of everything. There is not a sort of travel that she hasn't done. That's um, that's interesting. And what did the investigators say when you told them that? <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I, I told them you'll basically be pursuing a fugitive who has committed no crime. Basically, Mama Jeff will hide from you guys. And uh, if you want to have fun finding her, go ahead. But you're probably trying to. And this is my point to the investigator. I get it that you have standards. You have to do stuff. And when you hear about a woman who has disappeared, you have to unleash the whole cavalry at her no matter what. We don't know. She could be in danger. But most likely, you're deploying all of these efforts for a party girl who just happens to be hiding very well. This is a high IQ, extremely capable woman. And personally, I always told the investigator, I don't think she's in trouble. I still think as of today that she is good. Gotcha. Well, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of merit in what you're saying um, when it comes to, like, why would you instantly, without knowing much about the case, uh, cast dispersions? I think that it's okay for people to inquire if something sounds off. I think that it's wrong for them to jump to conclusions. I do also understand, though, that while you are correct that they probably shouldn't point directly at the closest man, oftentimes the closest man is responsible for the disappearance if we look at the stats. I mean, yeah, what? What the fuck? Like, he's still writing this Manosphere thing of like, well, you know, you shouldn't point at the, the closest man, but also the closest man is the one. What? Then you should point at the closest members, man. Family members, things like that. But and everybody thinks they're this. an internet detective. What right? a wonderful computation you just did, except that it's only allowed against white men. Make that computation <laughs> against any other category and we'll see what happens to you. Well, I mean, it's just the police do it literally every day. The police do it literally every day. Like, what are you talking about? Do you think other, like, people, men of other races do not commit crimes? Are not suspected of committing crimes? Like, half the time when riots break out because police shot a black man, it's because they were suspected of something. They were in pursuit of somebody. Somebody ran. They reached for something. Like, this idea that only white men are suspects is such fucking transparent bullshit. Men in general, isn't it? Well, no, uh, because there are statistics that would allow me to say the exact same bigoted thing you just said. And they would allow me to say it, and I could get banned for saying it. So people wake up, uh, just check your own bigotry. You guys are all after me, and ultimately it's because you hate men. <laughs> the fucking chutzpah on this guy. Wow. I mean, fair enough. I was just going off of, like, um... The stats that they show when it comes to if a person has actually been murdered at all, it usually comes from the family. Yeah, but we don't do accusations of murder in this society on stats. It's like, I could, I could be part well, of a true. group of people who murder a lot, and I could happen to be the... You literally do. People like you literally will not shut up about the FBI crime statistics. Like, that's, that's literally your entire argument. And of course, you know, you break it down by per capita, and it doesn't fucking add up. But, like, the idea that, like, oh, people in this society, you can't go by stats. That's all you have is misusing stats to support your arguments. Because otherwise, you wouldn't have anything to prop up your racism. One who doesn't murder. And our society has a commitment to principles of due process that allow us to say, even if you're a group that commits a lot of murder, we're never going to get at you if you haven't done it. Mr. Krabs says for $5, JF, with respect, you didn't actually answer the question. If she were mentally ill, would you tell us? But there is a false premise to your question. That mental illness is a fact. Mental illness is a human judgment. And so I would. Jesus fucking Christ. I take it back. I take his educational. This is this is like Matt Walsh shit. Like, it's like, oh, what? <laughs> Guys, how are you going to prove mental illness by monitoring differences in brain patterns? By seeing differences in the chemical balances of brains? Like, you can't prove. Mental disorders, you can't prove that some brains are different. What, what are we living in the future? Like, it's not an opinion. These are things that scientists have studied and judged for years. Yeah, also somebody, I, I'm calling bullshit on him being a neuroscientist. Not saying that he doesn't have like a degree or whatever the fuck, but like, come the fuck on, dude. How are you gonna be a neuroscientist and say that, oh, dude, like, Mental illness, uh, no, he's doing that Matt Walsh definition thing where he's like, Duh, you guys, the, he's conflating the idea of mental illness with being a negative thing and trying to be like, oh, just because somebody's different doesn't mean they're mentally ill. But uh, that's taking away the idea that like uh, mental illness is not a great way to describe it, but right now it is the co most common way to describe like what a lot of people are trying to, to refer to more as neurodivergency as just differences in brain chemistry and understanding them and how they make people different according to the environments around them. Yeah, he's a neuroscientist in the same way I'm Queen of England.
He refused to engage with your question because there's a hidden moral prior <laughs> in the factual word of your question. It is very grave. God. This, if, if anybody wants to know why I don't do a whole lot of stuff with this like intellectual dark web stuff, it's because of how cringy they get. Like it's it's the same thing with like Jordan Peterson, where like you're well, you're you're giving me a false premise, so I I refute your questions on the basis of morality, as you, you, empirically you are being uh, you are trying to be tyrannical over. It's just like it's just dumbass buzzword bullshit. It's like just say what you actually mean to say. Nobody cares how many fucking similes, not similes. Um, homonyms you can throw in <sighs> synonyms that's the word i'm looking for sorry i already said multiple times i've read and recorded two scripts today so i'm what a little, thing to do here people fuzzy. don't realize how grave it is to talk of mental illness as a fact mental illness is a human judgment a moral one one that comes with intent to take over the life of someone in our society right now the way they did to britney spears and the way they did to others and i will never participate to this artifice of deception that it is to start claiming that mental illness is a factual description of anything and even if he truly believes this, even if this is what he is truly espousing as the reason why he didn't stop her, if she does provably have some kind of impediment, some kind of disorder or chemical imbalance that would put her at greater risk without a support network, without people around her to help her and provide for her, and he decided to just drive her out and let her fuck off with truckers, then he is responsible for anything that's happened to her. And that's, like, I feel like that is, that's very plain to see. 